Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of the Florida Hockey Now Panther Post Game. I'm your host, George Richards. With me from FloridaHockeyNow.com, Colby Guy. Hi, Colby. Hey, what's up? Nothing. So we'll see you guys late. No, no. <laughs> We're here at FLA Live Arena. Florida Panthers just uh, pulled off another home win here uh, in Sunrise. The Panthers end up beating the Philadelphia Flyers. Two to one in overtime. Aaron Ekblad with the goal. Two minutes and uh, 21 seconds remaining in the overtime. Uh, Colby, just real quick, Florida Panthers did everything possible tonight. Um, they were out shoot. I mean, I've, I haven't seen possession stats in one team's favor like that in a long time. Yet the Florida Panthers are down one nothing. What happened tonight? So they did get a lot of high danger scoring chances, especially those first two periods when they were down one nothing. They hit about like four or five posts before they finally got that goal. And I mean, one of the players that was driving play that didn't necessarily get a shout out was Gustav Worthling. He he made a lot of good outlet passes. He was in the slot. He had a good, a good amount of shots, uh, shot attempts there. One of them rang off the post there. Uh, he made some defensive plays. He was one of the bigger drivers of play today. So that's someone I'd give a shout out to. But Forsling, you could do that almost every game. The way Forsling's been playing, somebody asked me the other day, can the Panthers re-sign him and Mackenzie Wigger? I don't think so. I think I think they've both you, you might get one. You might not get either because both of these players have priced themselves maybe out of the Panthers in a few years. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what the salary cap looks like when both their extensions are over. But both of them are looking like very quality defensemen, very quality like players that you'd want to build your team around. And now Florida right now has three of those guys on their roster that are pretty high-quality defensemen, with Forsling being that really good offensive defenseman who can drive play. I'd like to see them use him more as a power play quarterback just because of the way he can control play, make those passes. And he slings the puck around. Yeah. So he can make that puck go fast and whatever. And I think he'd be a really good piece of that power play. And he's a team that if I'm looking at in free agency in the next two or three years and my team's power play was struggling, that's a guy you'd want to add there to add some juice to it. And then Weaker, you know what you're getting. He's very um, solid on both ends of the ice. Uh, he can give you power play minutes. He can make those big defensive plays. So you have both of those guys in the fold there. I think you can only pick one. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, that's just going to be one of the ways that things work out. Uh, again, tonight, Florida Panthers fall down one nothing. Joel Farabee. Uh, gets all alone, walks in on Sergei Bobrovsky, scores at 7.33 of the first period. Florida, uh, that might have been the first time Philadelphia really had possession of the puck uh, in the first seven minutes of that game. Florida was absolutely dominating. Panthers came out flying, yet it's the Flyers up one nothing. Flyers play a perfect road game, right? They clamp down. They're blocking shots. They were not afraid to play the game in their own zone with their backs to their goalie. They were fine with that. They were happy up one nothing. They didn't want to add on to it. Um, and, and I thought Philadelphia played a great game. They got themselves a point out of this. After losing three in a row, I'm sure they're okay with it. Yeah, Martin Jones had some really big saves like in that second third period or the third period. I think Jones had this really big stick save on Sam Reinhardt that kept the Flyers in the lead there. And he had a few more really big saves that really kept the Flyers in the game. He's been one of their bigger components in that game. Yeah, Ryan Lumberg had a, had a couple shots that went away. He had one, a completely open net. It gets sweeped away at the last minute. Uh, that was a tough one for, for him. But moments after that, the Florida Panthers get their first power play opportunity this season. They're down of the season. First power play opportunity to tonight. They're down one nothing. 359 into the third period. Sam Bennett off a great feed pass from Anthony DeClaire. Pops are in there. Uh, first Florida Panther power play goal. Uh, they were 0 for 19. They had not scored a power play goal since that Carolina game. Remember they went 3 for 3 in the first period on the power play. 0 for 2 after that. Um, Aaron Ekblad, who again got the game winner, said everybody's just there. They needed that power play goal. It, the power play has not looked great lately. Yeah, they uh, started that one off the face-off uh, 
Ekblad found Duclair there. He had a r little bit of a rocket of a pass where uh, Bennett was able to deflect that in, but they were able to score that fairly quickly into that power play. And that one seemed to be a big confidence booster for that power play to kind of get things moving a bit quicker. Yeah, Florida also had some more chances in the final minutes, but honestly, Philadelphia kept locking things down. Florida gets a late power play, doesn't get a whole lot going, um, and that's it until overtime. Uh, in that overtime, Sergei Bobrovsky, who ends the night with... Dun, 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 dun. How many saves you have there, Bob? Uh, 32 saves. Number 32 came against his old buddy Cam Atkinson, the two, this former Columbus teammate, driving in in overtime. It's a, it was a really nice save by Sergei Bobrovsky. Florida comes back up the ice. You know what usually happens there. I believe Ekblad took that pass from, yeah, Jonathan Huberdeau. Uh, Jonathan Huberdeau had a shot on goal was able to get the puck back, feeds it to uh, Aaron Ekblad in the slot. Bing, bang, boom. Uh, as Goldie says, let's go home. Florida Panthers have now won 11 consecutive home games to start the 21-22 NHL season. First team to do that in the NHL since the 1963 Chicago Blackhawks. They will go for, to take sole possession of this record on Saturday night when the Seattle Kraken come to town. Uh, Colby, anything to add? Yeah, uh, just a very complete performance there. They couldn't get the goals in those first two periods, but they, they got the goals when it mattered. Uh, Ekblad in the slot to finish it off, and I mean, 11 in a row at home. There's a lot of there's a lot for Panthers fans to be thankful for heading into Thanksgiving tomorrow. Yeah, everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Have a have a safe holiday weekend. Uh, don't forget, come to FloridaHockeyNow.com. Subscribe to our site right now. We have a Red Friday sale going on, 25% off an annual subscription, $22.50, $22.50 for an annual subscription to Florida Hockey Now. Go there. Uh, when you click on there, Red 25 is the discount code. You'll get my stories. You'll get Colby's stories. you get a whole bunch of stuff. We've got, what, five stories today, right? Yeah. Five stories today. Then we're adding the video, so there's just more fun stuff for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you from the with the uh, Florida Panthers pregame, uh, the morning skate show, the pregame, the morning skate. We're going to do that Friday from Plantation, Florida. The Panthers are in Washington, D.C. Uh, they're playing the Capitals. So uh, until then, have a great Thanksgiving. Have a great Red Friday, 25% off, FloridaHockeyNow.com. Go get them. Colby, send us out of here. Enjoy that turkey, fellas. Happy trails, eh? <laughs>